Hey everybody and welcome to today's video. So I'm so excited to bring you this video because I've always wanted to do part three-ish of these. I asked on my Instagram for you guys to send me questions and I thought of some topics myself that I'd like to talk about. I was absolutely blown away by all the questions that you guys left because I actually had so many more than I thought I would. So thank you for taking part if you have. If I haven't got around to your question, I might do a part two of this video, we'll see. Maybe your like little sick form open days and things like that have been canceled. So you might wanna know what it's like. Could be relevant for year 12 or year 13 if you're watching, or if you're a bit older and you just wanna reminisce on your sixth form experience. Just for some context, I went to a Catholic state school throughout my education. My high school has like a sixth form attached to it, so I just stayed on there. Um, I did three A-levels and an EPQ. My A-levels were in English Lit, History and Geography. And obviously my time got cut short because of Corona. We're not going to do the questions in any order. I'll try and make it as quick fire as possible so you're not here all day. So the first one we have is, what would you say the hardest A-level is? The hardest A-level was definitely English Lit. The sheer amount of knowledge you have to have to even get quite a basic grade it's crazy, I think. I did all essay subjects and I quite struggled with the fact that maths and science and stuff, it was so, well, from what I heard from my friends who did them subjects, it was so tick box related. Like once you got a concept, you got it and you could do the exam question. And if you failed your test, you could be like, oh, okay, fair enough. I have to know X, Y, Z. But with in subjects like English, the learning just never stopped. Like there's no physical way you can learn everything about every character, about all the context. You're just not gonna know it ever. So you never felt accomplished. Right? There's like some statistic where 50% of English exams are actually marked wrong because English is so subjective. And I'd feel that like even between my teachers, I'd get such vastly different grades from different teachers. Someone asked, was sixth form as stressful or as difficult as you thought it would be? Yes, because like I found GCSEs quite stressful. So I imagine that sixth form would be that times 10. But then I can't fully say that I found it stressful because I never actually got to do the end A levels, which I feel would have been the most stressful period ever. To keep on top of homework, like I know this is so cliche, but do it the day you get it. If it's a piece of homework that you know is only gonna take an hour, why would you delay it further? I didn't always do this, but I tried to do it as soon as I'd get home or if I had a free the next period after I'd got a piece of homework, I'd try and just get it done just so it was out of the way. But if you actually get into the routine of doing it in year 12, then it will just be second nature by year 13. But someone just said getting a job. I wouldn't have been able to do anything if I didn't have a job because if I wanted to go to a gig or go, go down to London or do anything or go out for a meal with my friends, there was no way my parents were gonna facilitate like my social life in year 12 and 13 so I had to have a job otherwise I wouldn't have been able to have fun um, and I couldn't just rely on like birthday and Christmas money for the entire year. In year 12 I had a zero hour contract job which was annoying at times because it would be sometimes quite last minute when I work and I wouldn't always have a stable income but then again it was so good to pick my hours because if I wanted to do something on a Saturday it wasn't like oh I have work like I could be so flexible and do my own thing the pay if you're on a zero hour contract is usually awful and then in year 13 I had like a actual contract job I have to work 12 hours over the weekend that's what it is no I say get a job if you can hold it down then great carry on uh, maybe don't do more than 15 hours unless you like really have to because I know that some people like they actually work to fund transport to sixth form or basic necessities whereas I was really lucky that my part-time job was just to like have fun and I'm really grateful for that and I'll also be grateful for it next year that I have actual savings whereas I know some people who are going to uni with literally nothing because they've never had a job so I don't know there's pros and cons and um, this is such a good question and I wondered this so much the question is what does everyone wear and when I was in year 11 I used to always look at all the sixth formers and see what outfits they were wearing uh, my sixth form because it was part of a school you had to had to be somewhat covered up because obviously you're walking around with little kids I know some sixth forms are actually strict and you have to wear smart casual or office wear sort of if you're going to a sixth form wear it's just sort of chill i think there's like one girl who once got told off for wearing like a low cut top but i think that was it i will put some pictures on the screen of what i wore in case you want to know standard sort of thing would be a t-shirt and jeans something like this i wish i had this during sixth form it's just a adidas pullover jumper oh my god these are so good a t-shirt or a jumper and jeans and trainers and that is pretty standard uniform for boys and girls 
if I was going out after sick form or I just wanted to feel a little bit nicer. Sometimes I'd wear a little denim skirt or I had this denim dress that I sometimes wore. Then you get some people who literally just wear joggers and you've never seen them in anything else but joggers. Um, during summer, some people wear long t-shirts and cycling shorts, I saw that a lot. And someone said how to blend in, but stay true to yourself. Um, I just say be confident in your decisions and what you want to do. I feel like it's more like a high school thing to sort of want to blend in more, whereas when you get to sick form, Especially like, I don't know, I found this anyway that I just sort of wanted to do my own thing. This one made me laugh because I have literally no advice. I'm starting at a private slash independent school having previously gone state, help. I just think see it as a massive opportunity. There is a whole debate about whether private schools should exist. I, I think it's an interesting topic talking about private schools versus state schools and all that jazz. Um, but that is a debate for another day because your class sizes are going to be smaller, your teachers are going to have more time, perhaps more expertise, I don't know, I can't, I don't know if there's any facts to back that up. Definitely take that opportunity. This one I got asked a couple of times and I would have loved to know the answer to this. So someone said how to organise and store your class notes or revision notes. Um, I just say folders, they probably will encourage you to use folders. I have done literally an entire video all about how I organise my folders and there's some like revision tips in there as well. So if you fancy watching that and I literally flick through my folders and show you ideas of like things you can do and how to organise and things. Tips about year 13 that aren't studying, e.g. social life, extracurricular. I feel like I didn't really do anything extracurricular. I did YouTube, there we go. Although I kind of gave that up throughout sixth form. But I would say just give yourself things to look forward to. But although the two years goes really quickly, when it's like January of year 12, you're like, this is never gonna end. Even it could be something as simple as, right, I know that every Friday I have a free, so every Friday during that free, I'm gonna get pasta and sit and have a gossip with my friend. I know, did they even do pasta on a Friday? Maybe it's a Tuesday or something, I don't know. And it actually made me look forward to that in the week because it was just something different. It was just something nice to do. Give yourself things to look forward to, whether that's big things at the end of term or on the weekend or whether that's just little things during the week. Um, someone said, do you have any advice for prefects or head girls? No, my school didn't do that. We did that in year 11, but not in sixth form. Which teachers or adults should I be talking to a lot more in year 13? I think all of your teachers. I feel like I had such a close relationship. That sounds so weird. That sounds so Waterloo road -esque. But I actually did have like such a close bond and like a close relationship with some of my teachers. Your teachers are the ones who are writing your references and if you need help writing personal statements or if you want extra revision help, they are the ones you have to go to. So it literally makes sense to be nice to them. The careers advisor is quite a good person as well to talk to because they can sort of help you sort out your life. Now, someone said, do you recommend joining a sports club? Which is so funny because I didn't do any sports throughout sixth form. I did in high school, but when I got to sixth form, I just wasn't interested. If like your sixth form offers it or you can do it outside of sixth form, 100% yes. What a great way to make friends and keep fit. I joined a gym midway through year 30. I found it really improved my mental health. I used to sometimes go before sixth form or I'd go after sixth form and yeah, it just made me feel good about myself that I'd done something productive with my day. Things you don't need in year 13, general slash regardless of classes. Unless your school actually you learn on a laptop, I said you don't actually need to bring it in. Especially if you don't have coursework subjects. Like I only ever bought my laptop in to do coursework or if I knew there was a piece of work that I had to submit on the laptop, like I had to print something out, then I'd bring it in. But some people would bring it in every day and they had like no coursework and they'd just sit on it and be unproductive. You don't need to buy a new expensive laptop because you won't really use it unless you have coursework based subjects. And even then it's probably only gonna be for a couple of months of the year. Someone said, in sixth form, does it feel like you're juggling too many plates at once? Yeah, not all the time. The best time was in year 12 when I'd finished my mocks and I had nothing to do. I was thinking about uni, but I wasn't writing my personal statement yet. And that was just such like a golden time. It was really nice. You do have good periods in sixth form where you're not busy. It was just certain periods in the year when you'd have mocks due or coursework due or you're applying for uni, that it got stressful. How do you know what uni to choose? I don't know where I want to go. This was such a stress. But this is a lot of people's main worry, especially when they get to year 13, because everyone around you is deciding and you're like, oh my God, where do I spend my 60,000 pounds? You know, but you have to actually dedicate the time to learn about the course you want to apply for, where is best for that. Look at the individual modules, because there's no point just being like, oh, Exeter's good for geography. And then you look at the modules and you're like, I actually don't want to 
to do that. Look at the distance, how far away it was. I really wanted to go to Leeds and then I went there and it took like four hours to get there. And I just thought, I just don't want to be somewhere that far away. Watch vlogs of people who go there on YouTube. It's such a gamble in a way going to university because it's so expensive and you have no way of knowing if you're going to enjoy it. But if you're somewhat confident with your decision, it looks like a good course, a good uni, you could sort of see yourself enjoying it, then just go for it, I think. Um, someone said, year 12, what to do from day one, revision wise. One tip I have is make revision cards as you go along. So if you've had a lesson where you've learned a lot of new definitions of things, or you've learned key concepts, just write them down on a revision card and make them into like a revision question. And then you'll always have that for the entire two years. I know that this one is a joke um, because I bang on about it all the time. Um, summer schools with a question mark. They didn't run it this year or it was an online summer school. Uh, if you're in year 12 and you are quite set on going to uni or even if you just want to know what university is like, definitely I think around January, March, April time, they start advertising summer schools. It sounds really nerdy. They're so helpful deciding on what university you want to go to and trying out university life. You'll meet really lovely people there. So this is similar to what I was talking about before someone said how to pick university without being able to go to open day. This must be such a stress. Open days honestly were such a big factor in where I wanted to go. Definitely attend the virtual open days, even if they seem a bit rubbish. By March, April time, they do um, offer holder day. So if you're lucky enough to get an offer from whatever university, they'll invite you up to try out the course and maybe you can look at some accommodation and you'll go to some talks about finance or whatever. And hopefully by then, things like that will be able to happen. Yeah, just pick five that look all right and then you can worry about choosing them later on. Some unis are doing a socially distanced open day. I don't know how many universities are doing it, but Royal Holloway did it. So definitely like keep an eye out for what's going on. Um, someone said, any advice about meeting new people if you're going to a new school for sick form? Obviously I can't give first hand advice because I didn't do that. I met my friend Erin on literally the open day thing because she went to a different school and joined our school. We didn't have that many external students. I don't know, how did we even get talking to Erin? Maybe like we invited her over to sit with us or she just came over. I don't know. And then we've been friends ever since. So it's just a case of putting yourself out there, being friendly. I know it's not as easy as that and I'm making it sound easy. And I'm so nervous to make new friends at uni, but it's just one of the things you've got to do. Otherwise you'll be lonely for the two years. I remember I met another friend because I invited them to get a coffee and then to sit with my friends. Either like wait for someone else to make the first move or if it looks like no one is going to, then you'll just have to do that yourself. Someone said how to stay motivated and keep your mental health stable, which I thought was quite an interesting one to end on. Motivation, as I said, is just about giving yourself things to look forward to. You no, know it is normal to have mental health fluctuations in sick form because it is a really stressful period of your life. But if it's fluctuating to the point it's like manifesting itself physically, then definitely get that seen too because that's not that's not how it's meant to be. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are going into sick form in September or you're going into year 13, then I wish you the best of luck. It will be stressful, but there's so many good things to look forward to as well. So I'm sure you'll have a great time. If you have any video suggestions, then please let me know. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends if they're also going into sick form and might like some advice. And uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon in next week's video.